Okay, good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for coming. This is the 6 p.m. Uh, workshop of the Scarborough Town Council. It is January 22nd, uh, and this is specifically for a WEX CEA proposal. Uh, joining us today are all the councillors. And Mr. Ben Devine is with us. He is with Center Street LLC. He would be the owner of the building uh, that WEX would be leasing. And we have uh, Karen Martin with us as well, who is the executive director of SETCO. And before I let these two take it away, I thought it would be appropriate for me to go down the timeline of sequence of events that have led us here, so to speak. I know the font's a little bit small, so bear with me. Um, I may not read all of these, but I will add a little bit of commentary to some of them to give it some context. Uh, so July 2019, Response to WEX request for proposals due from developers slash town submits letter of support with proposal. Uh, from what from my understanding is WEX put out a request for proposal. Scarborough answered said request for proposal. Uh, one of the criteria for that request was to um, acknowledge or discuss possible tax incentives. It is my understanding that the our response to that did not speak of specific tax incentives, um, but that's where we find ourselves today. It was part of the um, RFP. The, uh, the next big date, <coughs> September 6th of last year, WEX uh, representatives and consultant meet with, met with Peter Hayes, the former chair, Katie Foley, the former vice chair, Tom Hall, and Karen Martin. Uh, November 18th of last year, WEX requests meeting with Tom Hall and Karen Martin. The sites are narrowed down to the Downs in South Portland. Uh, so on about November 18th of last year, it was pretty clear we were in a competitive process with one other town. Uh, November 19th of last year, Tom Hall meets with WEX representatives at headquarters in Portland. And our first executive session, it was a string of three executive sessions. Our first one was on December 4th. Uh, we had an executive session to consider negotiating uh, a CEA directly with WEX. So in December 14th, we asked ourselves the threshold question, are we willing to entertain a CEA, yes or no? And the results out of December 14th was, yes, we'd be willing to entertain discussing a CEA. Uh, December 18th, our town council went into executive session to consider a CEA with WEX. Uh, two days afterwards, Vice Chair Don Hamill, uh, myself, uh, uh, Tom Hall, members of um, the Downs folks, and Ben Devine, along with Soffit uh, Kobaj, who was, is the WEX representative. We all met in Portland to have a roundtable discussion with all of the principals in the room. Uh, December 20th, that meeting is a pretty significant date. Uh, it was that date in which it was pretty clear to us what we were negotiating against and what we had to do to um, be competitive with said negotiation. The <laughs> ultimate result of that uh, meeting, and I will let Mr. Ben Devine correct me or fill in the blanks, but we looked at Ben Devine from across the table and made it very clear we were unwilling uh, as a town to um, absorb the total shortfall to make this offer competitive. Uh, and Ben Devine had committed to us that the town and him would quote me in the middle. And that's where we are today. Uh, we brought that back on January 8th to the executive session and to discuss essentially the meeting that we had with Ben Devine and the principals that I have mentioned otherwise. Uh, so that's where we find ourselves today. Uh, we have uh, today, January 22nd, public workshop, and we're also going to do the first reading today. Uh, February 5th will be a public <coughs> hearing. There'll be absolutely no action on February 5th. That will be a public hearing. And on February 19th, there'll be a second reading and adoption if necessary. Um, just to note, the, the way we're operating this, this actually is a two-step process by statute. It can be a public hearing and a one reading on the same night. Um, this is our attempt. We're fully aware that we have been behind the communication curve in this process. Uh, we are fully aware that a CEA or a tax incentive has not been mentioned by the press uh, very prevalently or clearly. Uh, this is our effort to present to the public, this is where we are, this is how we got there. Um, and we're looking at these ne this next month as our process for the public. So with that, uh, unless, Mr. Hamill, do you have anything to add? Does that, no, no, no? okay, okay. okay. Uh, I will let you two take it away. So. Sure. 
so tonight we want to talk about the, the WEX project itself, talk about what um, we're really, uh, what's going to happen at the site, um, talk about the location, where it is, um, discuss some of the growth impacts, but also talk about what the benefits are, uh, both in terms of WEX, uh, some of the qualitative benefits, as well as um, you know, the direct financial benefits uh, from WEX locating here in Scarborough. So to start with, um, the project is by the spring of 2022, um, WEX will lease 200,000 square feet in a new office building that's been designed and built for their needs. And that's where Center Street <coughs> Partners will come in, and we'll talk about that in a few minutes. In the beginning, there's going to be 600 to 650 existing employees. Um, it may be as much as 800, but um, 600 to 650 is what our original understanding was in terms of existing employees. They're going to come from other buildings um, that are currently in South Portland being leased, and they will move uh, those to the new building. They will also be adding new employees. They're probably going to be adding new employees between now and 2022 um, when they move in. Um, our understanding is they will um, really peak at probably, um, in this 200,000 square foot building, peak at around 1,200 to 1,250 employees. So that is essentially the project. What we're here to talk about tonight is what that partnership with the town is going to look like. And the town is really proposing, as Paul said, to return a portion of the taxes generated by this new building. If the building's not built, there's no taxes being generated. So we have to have the building come in, and then there's uh, taxes generated on the new structure. Um, once the new structure is in place and it's generating uh, new property taxes, we're looking to share a portion of those back with with WEX uh, through what's called a credit enhancement agreement. And we were able to do that partially because um, this project is located in the downtown tax increment financing district. Um, we're introducing the proposal tonight at this workshop. Um, and then the process going forward, um, as Paul mentioned already, January 22nd, which is tonight, workshop. And then a first reading if the council chooses. February 5th will be a public hearing where everyone can come and talk about what they've learned tonight um, and really comment on how they think this proposal works for the town of Scarborough. February 19th, there'll be a second reading and potential adoption of the credit enhancement agreement. And just to be clear, um, the adoption process is really focused on the credit enhancement agreement. So what are the key elements that we want to talk about tonight? Um, first, we want to say, well, who is WEX? Why are we interested in, in having them locate in Scarborough? We also want to talk about who will build and own the new structure. Um, where will it be located? Um, we've talked about it being on the downs, but let's talk about where specifically on the downs it will be. Um, what does the proposal, uh, the proposed deal um, with WEX look like? We'll go through that. What are the possible impacts and when are they addressed? There's certainly growth management impacts and we're gonna talk about how they're addressed and, and when. Uh, how does WEX fit into the Downs? We uh, certainly understand a lot about what the Downs development process was and what their master plan was. We wanna um, show you how that fits in tonight. Um, and then we wanna, again, uh, reiterate, what's the approval process? So let's start with who, who is WEX. Um, it's a global company. Um, they provide financial technology solutions uh, for millions of companies worldwide. Um, this is a homegrown company. They were founded right here in Maine. It's an incredible success story. Um, and I think uh, everyone in the state, as well as the region, is very excited that they've committed to do their headquarters and their uh, new growth here. Um, they've got about 4,900 employees. They're in 11 different countries. They have a lot of ability to choose different sites. And again, kudos to them that they want to build here in Maine. And kudos to the Downs and to us that they have chosen Scarborough um, as a place to make their uh, second home. 
So just to make sure, because sometimes when we talk about financial technology solutions, we don't know what that really means. So let's talk about that. Um, they do fleet cards and management services with companies. Their clients are companies. Um, they work with le electronic payments and really uh, take care of the company's electronic payments for them. Um, they do corporate credit cards for companies. And one of the, I think their newest um, uh, products is really working in the healthcare sector and they're really taking care of um, account platforms for different companies as they manage the healthcare for their employees. So a very solid, uh, grounded, um, growth-oriented set of products. So now we want to talk about who's, build, who's actually building the WEX project. And as we talked about earlier, it's Center Street Partners LLC will build and own the, the new building. It's Ben Devine. He's the um, lead partner coordinating the project. And Ben's been involved in Scarborough. He's been involved in projects all over the country. But he certainly um, knows Scarborough, and we know him. Uh, he's had some very successful projects, the Beacon um, at Gateway. He's worked within the Scarborough Gallery. Um, so he does have a great deal of experience here. And I'm going to turn it over to Ben right now so that he can talk through um, really some of the uh, more details of the project and what's going to happen in the future. And I'm going to move it forward and oh, let you talk about the proposed Do location. Pointer? Do I have a pointer? I'll let you find that. Oh, great. It doesn't work on the LED screen. So okay, good. great. Hi, um, I appreciate the opportunities uh, to, to be here tonight. Um, uh, I am uh, very familiar with development uh, in Scarborough. Um, I grew up in South Portland, so um, I was a Scarborough resident for about seven years uh, and uh, have done uh, quite a bit of development in the area. Um, I'm real proud of a, a retail project we did, Scarborough Gallery. That's a project uh, anchored by Walmart, Lowe's, um, and it's a, it was a, a, a difficult deal to get done. Um, work closely with uh, the town, and uh, you know I think it's a great project. Uh, coming off that, um, we identified a site in uh, on, off the Highgis Parkway. It's called the Beacon at Gateway. It will. It's halfway uh, developed. It will, when it finished, 288 apartments. It's been a great project. Um, and as we uh, saw the success there, and certainly uh, the growth in Scarborough, um, I had uh, been very familiar with uh, the opportunities along the Highgis Parkway. Um, the Highgis Parkway, the money, uh, and the commitment that the town made over a decade ago is really just starting to uh, uh, pay dividends today. And uh, certainly we would have been in no position to develop, to, uh, develop uh, the beacon at Gateway. And um, uh, seeing uh, the infrastructure there and the commitment that the town made, uh, we're excited about that development. And uh, saw the opportunity, when I learned about uh, the WEX, it was about a year ago, and uh, I had heard rumblings that WEX was uh, potentially in the market for uh, up to 200,000 feet of operation space. They had just finished uh, uh, locating their headquarters on Commercial Street in Portland. Uh, they moved uh, a number of folks in there, and the balance of their employees were based along the Darling Road in South Portland collection of about six or seven buildings and uh, short-term leases, uh, some longer-term leases, and uh, they wanted to really represent to all their employees that uh, they cared enough about everybody to uh, not only move the, the big wigs into HQ, but to uh, allow for operations and growth potential and I think they, I, I'm, not, I'm not going to speak for them, but I think that there's been some challenges with locating in, in Portland. I think a lot of the employees are finding it uh, expensive to be there. Uh, the parking, uh, just to get lunch, uh, to navigate through the, through the town. So when they were looking at a request for proposal, 
I think specifically they said let's let's move outside of the downtown Portland district and they sent out a uh, proposal to a number of qualified developers and proposals came in uh, starting in uh, June and July of last year and it was really like a beauty pageant they would uh, kind of cut it down to 10 and then it was down to six and as they started cutting down it was clear to us uh, we always felt that that Scarborough was a, was a was a great location for them we knew that a number of their employees um, were already living in Scarborough that they were uh, primarily from the south and from the west and so uh, we felt good about Scarborough uh, the, the geographic location uh, but the proposals went out and they whittled it down to a number of uh, communities Falmouth being one uh, Westbrook uh, South Portland and Portland and uh, as the beauty pageant continued, uh, they started getting viable proposals from these communities and from developers. And as part of the process, of course, it was economic. Uh, they certainly want to be able to service their uh, employees and plan for the future. But one, but with the economics, they were also uh, it was also very competitive. And. As we got into the project, um, it was clear to us that it was going to be a very competitive uh, process. You know, we looked at the Downs as the best site uh, for us to pursue, and but we, it had challenges. And if it was not for the work that this community has already done to jumpstart Scarborough Downs, to put it in a position to feed off the highest and the infrastructure that you, you folks have already worked closely with the, uh, the, the Downs developers, we certainly wouldn't be here today. Because we were, we have been competing against projects that are much further along. And I don't think it's any big mystery of you know, who the finalists were. Um, I think it was Sable Oaks and to uh, a degree, the, uh, the Westbrook project um, the name of that? Rock, Row. Rock Row and uh, those communities uh, obviously have committed uh, quite a bit of resources to those developments which are a little bit more mature than the Downs so uh, we entered the, the, the project we knew that uh, we would have to be very competitive it's a 200,000 foot building and not surprisingly a number of these bids came in and they were pretty tight because frankly uh, a brick or a two by four is going to cost the same in Scarborough as it's going to cost in Westbrook or South Portland. Um, it was really what is the infrastructure and so we were a bit at, at a disadvantage looking at infrastructure knowing that some of these other communities specifically South Portland uh, also had an aggressive credit enhancement uh, district as well as an opportunity zone and Westbrook has uh, the Westbrook site is also in an opportunity zone and what that means is that's actually something that is beyond the purview of the town of Scarborough but it's a nationally designated area where each state was allowed to identify I think it was 32 areas and they got uh, very favorable federal tax treatment for infrastructure and building and uh, luck of the draw I, I'm not sure how it happened but South Portland got it Westbrook got it Scarborough didn't get it so that's okay we you know we knew that going in but uh, when the, the beauty pageant sort of went all down to the finalists um, the other communities Westbrook and South Portland got extremely aggressive and were able to work with their development team and unfortunately or fortunately uh, depending on how you look at it uh, for Wex fortunately uh, you know the bar kept getting raised lower and lower so uh, we're now competing with uh, other communities sites and their ability to offer uh, a, tur uh, a turnkey project to Wex cheaper than what somebody in Scarborough could do um, so as we look at the downs 
we, uh, you know, we know this town's done, and the developer, uh, everybody's worked really, really uh, hard and in good faith to really create something special there. Um, we were up front with Wax right, right from the start, saying, "Listen, uh, you know, this is what we're able to offer." Wex came back, and uh, yeah, you know, before we even got into the final final, I said we we met as a partnership group, and we already lowered our rent beyond what we could do. Um, and you know, Wex is smart. You know, they they uh, they want their best deal, and they're a publicly traded company. And uh, you know, we said, hey, listen, we got. We got Scarborough. It, it, it's a great place, long term, um, and you know there are many benefits that we'll all get into uh, why this is the right move for them. But they're also a publicly traded company with shareholders, and um, we're negotiating. They want the best, the best deal, and what became clear is that it's important for them to represent to to their shareholders. And this part of their search is what what can we get from a credit enhancement agreement? We're going to make this tremendous investment, probably for the next 50 years into Scarborough, and uh, part of the opportunity here, it's a two-way street, so we need a credit enhancement agreement, and uh, so we've worked. You know, we've had this meeting, this famous. December twentieth meeting, which was one it's of the famous though. I like it. Right? One of the <laughs> least pleasurable meetings I've ever been in, um, and uh, you know I think we'll let uh, the chairman and the vice chairman t talk to it. But it's clear that they made it clear that you need you, the developer, the town. You need to do more. Uh, we have done more. We have worked on this and there's a uh, this formula that's come up where uh, uh, the town will give up to $150,000 in credit enhancement agreements back to WEX. Developer will make up the balance. It's more than halfway. Okay. But um, we are committed to doing this um, and it's not all altruism. I've got apartments across the street I want to fill. And um, I believe in Scarborough. I think it was going to be a great deal. And I've got my eye on the expansion. Um, and I think long term it's good. It's going to hurt up front for us, but uh, it's going to be long term. It's going to be fantastic. And I wonder in the interest of time if you could really kind of work us through just uh, where the building is located in the site, sure. the infrastructure required, and maybe those expansion. So this is a little thing. Okay. <laughs> All right. So this is the Payne Road. Cabela's, Igus Parkway, Route One. Paul Johnson's head. You were going to go back. Oh, okay. Did my head do that? I, I did that. Very good. Very good. Um, so I just hit this one. The green one in the middle. Yeah. Okay. And so what we're uh, what we're excited about is on the Igus Parkway, where this credit enhancement, where this money will help go, is to build this road into the site. This would be the uh, racetrack here, right about there. And what this road will go in and connect eventually to Payne Road, and then uh, anybody that's driven down will see the residential road out to Route One. So if we can flick to the next slide, do I do that by hitting Yes, that? here you go. Obviously uh, not a tech. So this will be that road we talked about coming in. And here is the 20 acres that the Center Street LLC uh, proposes to acquire from the Downs. We're buying that land from the Downs. Uh, our partners will be uh, the folks sitting right there. And uh, we, uh, the economics of the deal are such that this land is going in a very cheap. They want to develop this to take, to take advantage and do the right type of development in the balance of the downs. But Center Street LLC will develop this roughly 22 acres. This represents a 200,000 square foot building. And 
I should also note that this is a parcel of land outside the downs under contract. It's called the dongle piece. And that's a family that's owned that land before this Highest Parkway even got split. And we can talk about that in a, in a moment. What we'll also discuss here is if we are able to land WEX, uh, we are in a position now to do the kind of development that we'd all love to see happen here. Hotel, uh, medical commercial here, restaurant, apartment. I'm sure you guys are more familiar than, than anybody about this edge sports complex. This will really activate that whole area. Again, this is that 7.5 acres. So this is a great slide to show beyond the 200,000 feet, which is this initial site for the credit enhancement agreement, is the 7.5 acres. That's what they want for phase one of expansion. Uh, they want the ability to, and part of our business deal is we will close on that and preserve that expansion potential on that piece. The other thing that WEX wants, and this is what really is exciting, is the potential to do another 200,000 feet. And we don't know when that happens, but um, I'm pretty sure if you look at the growth curve of WEX, um, we feel real good about the, the potential for that. That's about three or 400 yards from WEX. We'll continue on that road. And as part of our business deal, we will have to reserve this future 15 acre site for WEX. And uh, eventually I think you could see this, this tremendous campus um, locating here. It's the next one. Okay. okay, am I running out of time? You are. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Actually, Karen, do you mind if you pause? Because I, I think it's important that we ask that sure. few questions. And so I'll, I'll start just by asking some clarifying questions. Can we go back to the expansion slide for a second? Sure. Then the, the, to the left, the 7.5 acres, just to be clear, the CEA we're talking about is solely for the one large WEX symbol that's in the middle of that map. Uh, and, yeah. and clarification, the CEA that we're talking about is directly for WEX. Sure. Um, it's not going yeah. to the downs and it's not it's not paying for the street or yeah. it's going directly to WEX. So, and just because this is stuff that we, this is, this is what we heard in executive sessions playing out in front of public. Those 7.5 acres, you own that land right now? I have it under option, and as part of the WEX deal, I have to close on that the day we uh, finalize the, the WEX deal. And those 7.5 acres are not in down, so that's on. That correct. Be, that's the highest parkway development. Well. That's correct. Okay. okay, I just wanted to make sure that the public that's correct. understand. Does anybody have, because before Ben turns it over, just because I know this is, um, not yet, but yes. <laughs> Does anybody? Does anybody hear any counselors yet? So I have a question from a resident. It sounded like you answered it, and I'm not sure if you're at liberty to answer it if, if you did or didn't, but um, so who are the Center Street partners? So Center Street uh, Partners so LLC is a limited liability company. We set up uh, a single asset entity for each partnership. But the principals in that are myself, um, Divine Capital, it's a corporate entity. And I have a uh, partner that is also my business partner out of Rhode Island called the Koffler Group. They are the partners of the weekend. The other principals are um, uh, the Respiras and the Mishus. And it's a single, uh, single entity that will actually acquire the land from the Downs. We will de develop it, we will build it, we will own it. Um, and uh, your question. Okay, great, thank you. Just one further point before we move off this slide. Uh, to the chairman's point, this thick blue line represents the TIF boundary. And um, so there's actually Downs property owned by Scarborough Downs that's not within the, the uh, downtown TIF. What's important about that is the 7.5 acres that we're talking about here is this parcel. And then all of this other area uh, is outside of the uh, downtown TIF district. It's actually in the highest parkway TIF district. And that's a uh, point of uh, some discussion among the council later, perhaps. But it's an important distinction. And, and, and I would be remiss if I didn't 
point out these yellow boxes, which if this WEX project uh, happens, and I'm, I'm really excited, and I think it will, this represents what we think is the immediate tax increment financing activated by WEX. Uh, another 20 to 25 million dollars of new value that certainly is outside of any credit enhancement. You'll never see us, or I'm not even a partner in that, but uh, they can't come back and say, we need credit enhancements for that. That's outside of that box. A hotel, medical, um, and the Donald piece. Peter. Yeah, just, just kind of building on the theme though, when you mentioned the other parcel, the 15 acre parcel that is in, has there been conversations around expectation for a CEA for that too as contingent upon? Based on this experience, no. I think Wex, <laughs> Wex well, you know, they're going their eyes wide open. I, you know, I, I'll be candid, you know, we want to land the plane and then once the plane's landed, you know, they can come in and ask for what they need, but no, there's no, there's no expectation. There's been no conversation. Not, not at all. Not at all. No way. No? No more? <coughs> Take it away, Karen. All right. Uh, so we want to talk a little bit about what WEX would bring to Scarborough. Um, WEX would become, if with the 200,000 square foot building that we're talking about, we're not talking about future um, potential buildings that on the other parcels, just with the 200,000 square feet foot building. WEX would become our second largest taxpayer. They would, uh, behind Piper Shores, um, with 1,200, 1,200 or so employees, WEX becomes our largest private employer. Um, so they edge out Hannaford, um, which is our current largest private employer. They, as we've talked about, they become a catalyst for additional development on Hygus, in Oak Hill, um, on Route 1, throughout really Scarborough, they become a catalyst for new development. We did do some calculations looking at um, just the net new employees and just servicing um, from the standpoint of restaurants, um, additional office suppliers, um, it's anywhere from 200 to 300,000 um, additional square feet. And that helps um, really fill some of the space in the Downs. It can help fill spaces in Oak Hill. Um, there's a lot of possibility for, for that um, particular additional development. Um, the employees provide that demand for downtown retail restaurants and services. It really helps, um, I'll use one of Peter's words, it really does help activate what's happening or what could happen in the downtown area within um, the, the Downs property. It's one of the things that I think we've been really excited about is the downtown area with WEX and all of their employees. It really makes that um, happen, I think, in my opinion, earlier um, because you've got 600 in the beginning to 1,200 new employees all looking to um, shop, eat, uh, pick up their dry cleaning. Lots of uh, really local impact there. Um, the other piece that I think is important to us, with this, WEX becomes committed. I'm just going to say 15 years, because that's what we're talking about for a lease. But it's clearly, once they make this decision, I think they've, they've really committed to Scarborough for a longer period of time. And the reason I point that out is there have been um, other folks, large companies, who've come, stayed a couple of years and gone. They weren't necessarily committed to Scarborough. Um, and so I think, I think it's really important, this 15-year commitment. Uh, they've got a strong corporate history of supporting their host communities. You'll find Wex's name on a whole host of uh, really community, regional, and state investments. Um, and they are the largest commercial development on the horizon. As far as I know, and I'll ask anybody else, there's not another 200,000 square foot um, proposal like this, potentially 350,000 square feet on the horizon. And I will say why all this activity is, has started um, really with the RFP process. Um, we've been following WEX since 2015 
um, really being in touch with them, trying to understand what their needs are. Um, we would have loved to host the uh, headquarters that's in downtown Portland as well. Um, but they made the decision to split that, and I think that makes a lot of sense. It's a trend that you're seeing with some of the large employers. It's also a trend that I think we will see when we're talking about some of our biotech folks. Um, they'll keep some uh, headquarters in Cambridge and maybe move up and do some other um, uh, uh, second space, production space, hopefully here at the Downs and other places in yeah, Scarborough. Time to yes, we, the we should. All right, we're ready to talk about numbers. Tax revenues. Oh, yeah, sorry. That's great. That, that talks about the value proposition from commercial development and business. Correct. But as we sit here, a lot of the questions I've asked, <coughs> the average taxpayer in Scarborough, mm -hmm. what is the direct benefit? Because I mean, if you talk about, you know, it's another question for the numbers later on. If you're going to add another three to four hundred thousand of commercial space, mm -hmm. and you put twelve hundred Rex employees on the road networks, and that commercial space on the road networks, you know, who pays for whatever we're going to do to the roads? Okay. And what does the average taxpayer that's on a fixed income in Scarborough, how do they benefit from what we're talking about? What's the direct benefit to them? Okay. I had a question on your first point. Sure. So the second largest single taxpayer, at what point? After the 15 years? After the 30 years? Correct. Well, if you're just looking at their... Right, um, the, you the, take the net. Not yeah. They're going to come in, theoretically, at $45 million. They then become the second largest taxpayer. Six. They're number six. After the yeah. credits. After the credits. After yeah. the 15 years or the nope. 30 years? A1, they're number six. Yeah. After the 15 years, they're number two. Up to 15 years right. but, but not okay. with both the five CAs. I mean, the yes. part that goes yes. just yes. after the down, two hundred forty-seven thousand dollars is going yep. to be the sixth largest tax rate in the country. Right. Yeah. But again, you know, we're looking at um, if you're just talking about who, how much tax is being generated. Um, you know, they they become uh, with the forty-five million dollars, they become the second largest taxpayer right up front. Um, all right, so in the interest of moving us along, oh, Peter, I'm sorry. I'm, um, let's talk about the growth. I've got a slide we talk about. We can talk about the growth management and how that works. I, if you're asking me what is the net dollar subsidy or impact that this is going to have on the individual taxpayer, I think the answer to that in the numbers, anyway, is the surplus, surplus that after the CEA and after the Downs CEA and <clears throat> after the cost to serve in those first 15 years we still come up with about three million so I'll show you how does, we get there. But does the cost to serve include the improvements to the road networks? The improvements to the road networks are made in the planning process and they're going to be made by the majority of that is made by the developers themselves. Can't they have the responsibility to do design. that. Sure. Can you Ben because I I think Ben's yeah. probably a little more sure. worse, and can you speak to that a little bit? Yeah, okay. I mean, uh, this this uh, question came up the other day. So, uh, the I mean, I'm asking because that's what people are asking. Yeah, yeah. Right. That's what people thing. are asking. Us. It's sure. How, how's it going to if I, if I've got a place and I'm on mm -hmm. fixed incomes? Right. What's how's it going to impact me? I'm going to sure. have more traffic. Right. I may or may not have a tax break. Mm -hmm. So how do we are to that's that's sure. that's what we have to think as talking yeah. points right. to to mm -hmm. our public. Or, uh, good, good questions. Yeah, it's good. I mean, there are a couple questions in there. As far as the road work goes, on any any development project, uh, the state of Maine uh, is the uh, arbiter of uh, traffic. So, Department of Transportation, do a traffic study. Any improvements that uh, are mandated because there are more trips put on the road in Scarborough, uh, or even beyond that trade area. Uh, the developer has to pay for that. So that's not coming out of the pocket of... 100%? 100%. But, yeah. but what happens that other three or 400,000 commercial space that Karen just mentioned will be a direct result of well, the next coming? The new new space? Or yeah, who, pay, who, who then... Who pays for the additional traffic that they're going to put on the road? Are you well, saying... I, you're <laughs> saying if it's new... Uh, well, Karen just said that WEX is going to directly cause three to four hundred thousand of new commercial space just because restaurants, 
you know, I mean, that's that's the statement you just made. So absolutely, so. absolutely, and that one hundred and fifty thousand, some of that may be absorbed by the projections that um, the Downs has has done for their development. What we're saying is, this project can certainly. Um, uh, provide some impetus to the future growth projections that are in the Downs. It can also happen off-site throughout Oak Hill and other places. When a development comes in, the planning process, it's part of the site plan, it's part of the approval process, that you have to look at your impacts. And it's through that planning process that it's determined, are you paying impact fees? Are you affecting off-site development? Oh, let me so, but impact fees, we know, don't, the current impact fees do not cover the total cost. So are, are you saying, that my question is, are you saying definitively that any additional traffic impacts by this commercial, commercial development is going to be 100% paid by all the developers? Well, I, I, I or think, are taxpayers going to pay? I think you're, let's say that because Wex is here, Holy Donut sells more donuts and more coffee, um, that Holy Donut's not going to pay for that. The town of... Scarborough is not going to pay. For it. I mean, the, the this is a scientific uh, traffic study that shows a number of trip generated because of, let's say, six or eight hundred employees, or twelve hundred. Or twelve hundred. That's that's what the calculation is. If there's a new restaurant or a new hotel on Igus, they'll have to go through the same calculation. But if the Cabela's ends up doing better somehow because what people are there, they're not going to what. They're not going to pay. But that, that was that was the point I was trying to piggyback on when, when Karen was saying the other impacts that Wex might have because those other increase in commercial volume around the city. Mm -hmm. Taxpayers at the end of the day will have some liability for that. And, and so that's so when we talk mm -hmm. about mm -hmm. I'm saying the average taxpayer, how do we articulate that this is a really good thing? To do? So I just to clarify. A, a second development would have to go through its own yeah. tracks, right? So I guess yeah. that. But how would a taxpayer right pay for more road improvements? I don't understand. Because we pay, the taxpayers pay for road improvements. So that, no. Yes. Um, right now, employees of Wax live in Scarborough. They're traveling through Scarborough to go to South Portland. And it's my interest because if you remember, Peter showed circles. <clears throat> Okay. There's one of them. Yeah, yeah there's one yeah. of them. There's another black one. And I just remember my house is like in between the road. But right now, there is already an impact mm -hmm. from Wex employees traveling through Scarborough. Some of them, yeah. But I think what they're trying to explain, and I, I, and I wish people would understand it, is every employer, if you're building something in town, you have to go through the traffic impact. And you have to work with it, and as they've explained it over and over, you've got this two mile radius that if this impacts your impact fees, you're going to pay for any improvements. And when there's growth, you are going to get some increase in traffic. I mean, that's just the way it is. One of the good things is, as far as I'm concerned, that a company like Wex or Hanover or anyone like that, there's a couple things they can do, which I know they do um, from an HR point of view. They have alternate scheduling. Not everyone comes at eight and leaves at five. Um, they could do um, public transport, maybe more um, amenable or, or easier to set up. Wex may be willing to help with that. Um, ben talked about with the apartments he's building. I'll tell you, if I lived in Wex and I was a young person who was we're trying to get back to Maine, I would love to live over there and walk to work in Wex. Um, Sawyer Street, I believe the planning board's got something mm -hmm. going on with the cut, they call them the cottages, I think it is, and I can go them. are from Sawyer. I mean, there's a number of different um, housing impacts that aren't necessarily going to increase traffic. Yeah, you're going to get some increase in traffic and you have growth, but to me, that's not necessary at all. I think uh, the other point to make is the traffic is state roads, which I guess. Payne Road, those are state roads. Those are state dollars. When you're talking about a town road, you're talking about a residential road, you're not, I think you're confusing, uh, Peter, I think you're confusing the tax burdens 
of where the, where the money flows. Yeah, the roads are more crowded, um, but the dollars aren't coming out of uh, a Scarborough residence tax bill. I don't know. All I know is we see the budget every year, even like Gorham Road and other places. There's there's town dollars that go. <coughs> Usually in partnership with the state. I will say as part of the, the traffic dollars. movement permit that's being discussed and negotiated, I don't know how to characterize it, uh, much to the chagrin of the developers of the Downs, DOT is asking them to really look at full build out impact. I think if they left, if they had their preference, they would either be doing it by phase or building by building. But then the town is part of this process. We're trying to look at what is the full impact of build out. And uh, that's a process that they're going through right now. And it's uh, that's that two mile radius. They're being directed to do traffic studies uh, within that capture area. And that captures a, a, a lot of our community, frankly, at least the, the density developed portion of it. So we have, we have 10 minutes left. So, I, right. so please. Ben, are you comfortable talking briefly then handing right to so Karen? You developed Gallery Boulevard, correct? Yes. So could you speak about the amount of money or investment? Yeah, that was the, okay. the so, $2 million. So maybe, okay. And, and the, the rub there was uh, before Scarborough Gallery was really built, that's the Walmart <laughs> Lowe's development. Uh, you know, all that traffic was going to, into South Portland because the main mall is in South Portland. When we did develop Scarborough Gallery, we had to pay for the sins of all that. And so we put over two and a half million dollars of our money into the road system to widen that road. But, uh, you know, it was very ex expensive and it wasn't really fair because the thing was failing ahead of time. But the way that the development works is we had to pay catch up. Yes, yeah, so let's try to get to some numbers here. So, um, and then we can come back to the, to the growth management impact. So it's great, it's a really important discussion. So from a tax revenue standpoint, some people have called this a $45 million building, some have called it a 50. Um, it's 200,000 square feet, it's gonna get built in 2022. Um, we were being a little bit conservative and looking at a $45 million value. Um, we looked at some uh, uh, values on either side of that as well. But on average, we're expecting um, $838,000 in uh, average <laughs> annual revenues. Um, there's $12.5 million, 12.57, 12.6 million cumulative over the 15 year period. Because what we're talking about is um, doing a uh, credit enhancement agreement for 15 years only. $150,000 annually each year. So it's 2.25 million cumulative over 15 years. So it's a, um, in the scheme of things, a compared to other areas, a, a fairly conservative amount of money given back. I'm not gonna say that because um, Scarborough is different and we have to evaluate what's what's good for us. But again, it's a fairly conservative one compared to other um, uh, communities. So again, 2.25 million cumulative over 15 years. What that means is if we start working down the narrowing it down, this is just the 15 year period. Um, net taxes after the WEC CEA, after you take that 2.25 million, there's 10 million left. We're gonna owe the downs 40% for some of the years and 10% for others. Because remember when, when the Downs hits their $55 million cap, their investment or their um, uh, percentage reimbursement drops from 40% to 10%. Um, so toward the end of this period, it begins to drop. So there's 4.7 million going to the Downs in their CEA. So the net revenues after WEX and the Downs is 5.6 million. We've done an estimate of cost to serve over the 15 years of 2.5 million. Um, I think that's a fairly uh, conservative estimate, meaning um, uh, it's probably higher than expected, but we want to be uh, conservative in terms of looking <coughs> at net impacts. Okay, so Karen, can you just, I, I, just can you explain cost to serve yeah. for people sure. that are watching? Sure, absolutely, I mean, it's, it's absolutely. It's just municipal jargon for us, but explain what cost to serve sure. means, please. Okay. Sure, <laughs> so when we've gone into looking at um, these, uh, the 
the credit enhancement agreements and other things, we as the community decided, well, we need to understand um, what is that increment of development going to cost us um, to provide municipal services. And there really isn't a lot of that type of modeling out there. And so we had actually worked through the comprehensive plan with a consultant who had come up with some values for us. And this is the simplest of, hmm, I say simple, but there's a lot behind it. It's a simple concept, which is we're going to look at those line departments, the police, fire, library, those things that are sensitive to growth. And we're going to say, um, what is the typical uh, number of fire calls and um, uh, police calls that we expect per 1,000 square feet of office development, of industrial development, of, of um, restaurants, and those types of things. And then we simply apply the current um, uh, cost per uh, service call um, to, that, to that number. Um, we do that for police, fire, for public works. We look at the number of miles of roadway and do a simple, you know, what's the net cost of providing uh, public works? And we divide it by the number of roadway miles. For the downs, it's really efficient because the downs has um, a dense development and efficient roadway network. Um, so we also look at, again, library, uh, community services, um, and there's one more I've forgotten. Um, anyway, so we, we, we just take the budget as it is and we divide it out by um, you know, what the net cost to serve is and we apply it to the square footage the oh schools, duh, um, right. <laughs> the biggest <laughs> one, <laughs> right, right, right. Um, the uh, we simply apply it to the square footage or the number of units. And for um, WEX, they're not generating schools, so it's really um, about the service calls. And uh -huh. again, this model can be updated every year. It's complex in the number of variables, but it's a simple concept of taking per capita, per unit um, measures and applying it to the increment that you're adding. So in this case, we're adding 200,000 square feet. It's important to note, too, in that analysis that office development is uh, some of the cheapest to serve and therefore provides the greatest ROI. It's typically very high value and, and demands little services. So that return on investment is the highest of any development type. So I have a question. I'm not sure that we'll ever be talking to you again. Um, I don't know how this is going. You're not scheduled to be in front of the council again. Um, so I'm assuming that you're here because you need this CEA to make this deal. I mean, is that is that accurate? I mean, so, so there was a whole lot of press that came out. This is the number one question that I'm getting. It's a good question. You know, there's a whole lot of press that came out. We're pleased that Wex is coming to town. We picked French Landry. Um, Wex is coming to town. The impact will be threefold. There was nothing in here about the town of Scarborough and what we're re really the public process that we're going through now. I mean, I can I can read it in detail, but the right. number one question I've been asked is, are you're here because without this, you're not can't go forward? I, I just want to get that clear. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm under a confidentiality agreement. However, I will say this, that um, our deal is conditioned. I, I want Wex here, and, uh, but we can't. The, the deal we have is the way they have written it, they can walk away from the deal if the town doesn't uh, give them a credit enhancement. Now, you have to ask them what that all means. but. As a developer, um, I have a document that says they can walk away, and I'm trying to take that contingency out by, uh, again, I don't get anything out of the credit enhancement agreement. I wish right. I didn't have to be here. Um, but right. to get this deal done. Yeah, it was just confusing yeah, no, people in town. It's a fair question. There was no fewer than 8, 10, 12. Yeah. Was, I think, Peter, you were actually on with the plan next <coughs> to the name. <laughs> you know, 
at Atlas. So it was a very confusing um, message that came out. Um, and so that's been the number one question, question. Um, to me is what, what, what? Where is this, you know, where is this stand? To be fair, this is our first opportunity as a town to come forward with a lot of detail. Um, you know, and there's a whole side story around <laughs> the, the, uh, the ER piece of this. As a practical matter, I think it's very typical for towns to lag, uh, you know, the press in terms of what happens. And I think they're, you know, we'd be happy to talk about that at a later date. But I just want to make sure there's another side of the story that came through on that. I, 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 I pulled the town's quote to the press release. I did. And the reason why I did was it was led by the Downs team, and I didn't think it was appropriate that the town piggyback on a Downs press release because this is a deal between the Down and Wax. So the reason why the town is not in the press is because I pulled it. I just spent a 25 minute conversation on the phone with Tom Hall and Kelly Bouchard of the press, Portland Press Herald immediately before this meeting saying everything that the town needs to say. That was my decision. Perhaps in, in, in retrospect, it was a poor call, but this is not about the Downs to me, and I'm not going to allow our narrative be controlled on Downs letterhead. I think that's an accurate statement, and that's why. And, I, and I'm pretty much sure everybody on this table knows exactly why we're off the press. It was my call. So if anybody has an issue with it, it is on me. So I also want to add this. I participated in that decision as well about uh, you know, whether to participate or, or not in terms of a statement. And I want to just tie back to some civility work that's being done in town. You know, one of the principles for that civility work, uh, as I understand it, as I kind of interpret it, is seek first to understand before being understood. And I think that if we would all, each and every one of us use that, we'd be much better off. So I'm just, you know, it's a bit of a commercial, but it's easy to take <laughs> pawn shots at the people who are on the firing line. And believe me, I was one of the best pawn shots in the world before I Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> she was on the other foot. Uh, at least Peter yeah. hasn't given up his craft. <laughs> I also knew that the town didn't join that statement, but it was also my understanding that the Downs, who did all the press work on it and the statements, did not want to mention the CEA. And I guess I just, I, it's difficult for me to understand because that was still the public process that was to come. Everybody knew it. So it's just been confusing to people, to residents, about where we stand on this. I think we have an opportunity to set it straight tonight. That's why I asked the question, yeah. you said it. Yeah. And that's where we're yeah. at, so everybody is level set, and people can weigh in based on that. And I totally agree with that. So I did get defensive, but I, I think it's important to realize that some of this was a decision that was made on my end, and Don's end, in collaboration with Don. In retrospect, like I said, we're behind the communication curve, which is incredibly frustrating. Um, but with that, I think we're out of time. So the, just, if you're in the public right now, just as a a, a measure, we do have marijuana on the uh, agenda, which could be quite lengthy. So we are going to, when we start the official meeting, we are going to bump this to the first item on the agenda. So if you're in the audience and want to speak to this, just let us start the meeting. And it's going to be the first thing we do. So you can come up and speak. So we just have to do all the official stuff. Don's going to make a motion to adjust the agenda, and we can all speak. And we will have this, which has all the details um, up. Um, in uh, tomorrow for everybody to take a look at. Uh, you know what I mean? Like